Hey guys, welcome back to Disco Elysium. So exciting times then. I don't know if, if this is um, sig significant in the fact that it's pushing the sto story forward to the point where it's not going to be too long until it ends. But I still think there's a fair bit more to go. I mean, it could all come crumbling down pretty quickly, but uh, we'll see. Still not sure about whether or not we should have arrested um, Miss RNJ Disco Dancer there. Seems like... Well, I don't know. The game was kind of suggesting that, but I think it kind of suggests... Whenever you make a choice, it seems to suggest... that, uh, Like a big choice, it seems to suggest that you're... Um, Whichever way you do it, you might have done something a bit wrong. Um, let's see what we've got in terms of uh, optimization. What we're we wearing right now. I think we put this thingy back on, just because. Um, Although, we don't have a lot of empathy, so that's good for us. What are we wearing around his neck? We got that, we got closer in the hood. Yeah, okay. Um, should we go see if we can sing some karaoke? I think Kim would like that. And then I think we call it a, we call it a night, do we? Hey. Is there something you needed? Got it. I need to sing karaoke now. No, you don't. It's not happening. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. You need to approach this situation log logically. Ask him why he has the PA system installed if he can't use it. It's my way of apologizing for the trouble I've caused. Please let me say I'm sorry. By causing more trouble? I think we're good. Uh, why do you even have the PA system if no one's going to use it? It's for that he begins confidently but then stumbles on his own words. It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What happened in 44? A lot of people got killed because some asshole wanted to sing karaoke. It's not a prop, it's for your clients. I know it's used. When was the last time you had a band play here? It's not for bands, it's for clients. Some clients only, not you. I'm a real client, I've paid my bills and I have the right to use a karaoke machine. Ha, well, comes up with a counter argument. We don't have any tapes, they all got stolen. It's alright, I have my own song with me. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He be begins to frown hard. Fine, fine, climb on this, that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. He shakes the tape at you. I'll plug it in for you, damn this karaoke machine. I'm having it uninstalled, it mumbles to himself. Okay. Let's do this. This feels right, you belong here. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent, you can hear the pellets creak. Pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. So are you ready for your thing now? Let me know what, uh, when I should turn on the um, karaoke carousel. Oh, drama. Hang on a second. I want to make sure this works, don't we? Have we got anything for drama? Minus one drama, no. Plus one drama. Silk robing it up. Like that's it, doesn't it? Minus one drama. Yeah, we can't be wearing that either. Have we got any other minus dramas on? Okay, let's pop a save then. Seeing as though this is going to be rough. We want to see him sing karaoke. If we miss the thing, then. 
Hey, fifty-eight percent. That plus one gave us quite a bit. Ah. Come on, game. Don't do me like this. I want to know what happens when the karaoke goes right. Oh, come off it. This over 50% odds doesn't feel right. Although, at least it tells me that it is kind of random. Right. The air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. Okay, here we go. Often go there. Oh yeah, so it's the song "Ancient Reptilian Brain." Uh, nice one, Mike from Sixth. <laughs> um, a lazy applause fills the room. You feel your hands shake as awareness of your body of your body returns to you. Let's thank Kim. Lieutenant doesn't say anything but give you a quick smile before turning away. He's incapable of blushing, but if he weren't, he'd blush. Good, good. Cafeteria manager intervenes to cut the moment short. Are we ready? I want to unplug the microphone now. Last words. Evening will come. We will sew the white sail. Workers of the world unite. Thank you, Martinez. Yeah, thank you, Martinez. Yay! Oh, did we? We, uh, we got something that yes. might give us some more um, dialogue about Kim. Uh, yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Uh, come on, Lieutenant, open up a little. He sighs. If you insist, what do you want to know? Kim, you're wearing a revolutionary air brigade jacket, aren't you? What, this? He zips up the large collar. It's just seasonal clothing. And those look like airman pants, good for storing tools in. He looks at his pants. Where is this going? I see, Kim, I have this place in my head where I develop new ideas and connections. Interesting. I think it's called a brain. It's no mere brain. No, normal people don't have this. It's like a mind laboratory, a spiritual R&D division. No, a palette. Yep, no, better yet, a painter's atelier of contents. Okay, art cop. Okay, indeed. And in this atelier, I have realized that you have some kind of sentiment towards the revolutionary air brigades. 
I do not harbor a sentiment for revolutionary air brigades in particular. Just air brigades, then. Okay, I want you to become an aerostatic pilot. Then I turn 10 and realized we no longer have an air force. And sure the revolutionary has got nothing to do with this? Absolutely nothing. The revolutionary must have had a little luster to it for 10-year-old Kitsuragi. He will never admit it, though. It's okay to tell me. I'm a major fan of... Um, thank you. My mind is satisfied. Good. He glanced impatiently at his electronic wristwatch. Tell me a secret about yourself. <laughs> Lieutenant narrows a single eyebrow. No. Ask again. Your brain sends a signal to your lips, that, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. The eyebrow is exercising psionic control over you. It's like you're locked down. Uh, what's happening to me? Something in the matter, detective? What's going on? It's like you're a puppet in his hands. Give up. There's nothing you can do. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control of yourself. Uh, do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, when, you, when you're thinking, do you ever have conversations with, like, your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. But this is, isn't an old-school case. Okay, you're one of those old-school detectives. So what, that makes you the new school? God spare us. Uh, for the for real detective work, nothing beats a good notebook by your side. The lieutenant produces a familiar uh, memo technique, A6, and idly thumbs through a few pages. We all have our different mediums. His is written. You are super lucid, yet psychedelic. You don't need office supplies to connect your nervous system. You are special. Okay, that's all for now. You seem to be following me. Excuse me. Um... Nothing, just an observation. You have a, he's looking for the right words. A distinctive way of walking. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. Let it go. Okay, a moment passes. The lieutenant glances at the sports watch on his wrist. Yeah, so is it time we turn in for the night, I think? I don't know what the check is that we can do on the abandoned lorry. That's winding me up that I can't remember that. Is that is that the one near that where that old woman I'm sure we checked that actually last time. Sleeping dock worker. Um Don't really know where that is. We need to go back up here to do a couple of things, I think. Um but while we're here we yeah, we, let's turn in for the night. We've had a nice sing song. See you in the morning. Bed is still cold from the broken window and, and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. Go to sleep. It's not easy, but your bones are so tired from what feel like uh, weeks of work on the case. You have to try. After what feels like hours, you feel you might be sleeping. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on parity. On and on it goes for untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. 
Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time, the last time, the smoke in her mouth, the potted flowers, the faces turning, changing. It's the world, Harry boy, and you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop. Whirling. Spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map. Of a city. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? Solving your little crossword puzzle. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off your lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. Cause only love can break your heart. Beep, beep, beep! The alarm is ringing, Harry! The disco circus goes on and on! You barely slept three hours last night! It's talking about solving things now. The only thing I'm thinking, really, is... I mean, the thing is, if it's Ruby, we haven't really met Ruby yet. And it would feel really... Oh, in fact, before I do that, should I do um, forge the letter? Um, and it'd feel a bit strange if the person who's responsible we haven't come into contact yet. Um. Yeah, so let's forge the uh, letter. Uh, indeed, they look distinctively different and very convincing. These might as well be their actual signatures. But they're not, and the document will be nullified if they dispute it. That means Everat will have to start over. All you need to do now is mail the signatures to Everat's accountant in Ladella. There's a mail delivery box in the plaza near the corner of the bookstore. Okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, change this gap here. Let's put his uh, commander's jacket back on, because, you know, commanding. Take this off, because we get a bonus for not having it on. And, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. So, um, I'm not even going to check the abandoned lorry because I don't know which abandoned lorry it's on about and the only one, the thing that's labelled as abandoned lorry doesn't seem to have any further physical checks for us. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to find the sleeping dock worker, I can't remember him. Uh, Tommy Lee Hom, where was he? Matinee's waterfront. Backyard wall, conceptually. So we've got a couple of conceptualizations, cargo container door, rhetoric, impossible, and the hangman, inland empire, medium. Uh, so volition, 
the electronic doorbell. Let's try the electronic doorbell. We're close to that. Then maybe the hangman. Then we'll go over and we need to speak to um, what, what's the name? The cleaning lady. I might open up another new lead and we'll see where we're at from there. Yo yo, Kimbo. There's your nice stairs. Sim Kitsuragi. Hello. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's go. I wonder if there's anything new to be said with uh, what's his name. The copper NATO is back. What do you want? Uh, no, we've gone over everything, and I don't want to. Don't want to threaten him. I think that's a bad idea. I don't think we'll gain anything from it. So volition. You think you have a pretty hot suspect right now, don't you? That ruby of yours. Yeah, and notice how it came together without casting too much suspicion on Clarcia. It was nice and ruby centric in the end. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards thinking it's Clarcia. What do you mean? Anything strike you a bit off about the mis this mishmash? Yeah, so far no one has mentioned here in the shot, that's true. Notice how this hasn't come up at all. Even the Hardy and his boys didn't mention it, neither did you. Um, the footprints in the pinball workshop didn't fit with the old soles, and the bullet didn't have to come from the roof, it could have come from anywhere on the coast. Absolutely, it could have come from anywhere, but you're suddenly so certain it came from the roof behind the window. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that's right, finish thought. Just finish it and conveniently go on. She's watching you leave right now, you know that. Free as a bird on the roof, lighting up a cigarette and thinking, I'm glad Ruby's in this shit and not me. Don't listen to this guy. The theory was solid, he's just jealous, move on. It's no use for asking her further. Yeah, it doesn't add up at all. Um, have we got close for volition? I'm sorry to keep doing this. But I think it's kind of needed. Oh, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Let's right click, I don't know. Plus one volition on the Q race, okay. So is this old speak box? No, 92%, come on. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> okay, um, we'll come back when we can, I don't think, can we level up Volition again? We got one skill point and we got, yeah, okay. Flipping heck though. 92%, it should, we should save it, shouldn't we? No, not that. She's got to be near 100% now, surely. 97%. Hey. Whatever she says, it can't hurt you. You're a different person now. Stronger, healthier, and... Alright, maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drank so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. Oblivion's the ace in your corner. Call her again. It's like buzz as you press the doorbell, waiting for her to answer the call. It's cold outside, and you can hear the wind blowing into the speaker. A strange metallic taste fills your mouth as you stare at the intercom. Wow. There's the static again, whispering like a seashell pressed against the ear. Uh, yes, hello, this is Tricentennial Electrics. It's the same voice you heard before. Have you come to place an order? Hi, it's me again. I wanted to talk to you. My God. Here comes the bad vibes again. Relax, distance yourself from it. Please don't hang up, I just want to explain myself. Before you can finish your sentence, the voice continues speaking. It's you. My god, I didn't think I would hear your voice again. Where is she? 
Uh, didn't you already say that last time we spoke? Michael, just please. Or Mikkel. Even her breathing, the way her voice drops when she finishes the sentence sounds exactly the same. Why did why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months, she continues. I thought you didn't care. Just some kind of joke. I think it's funny it, deceiving a police officer. The voice from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into your microphone again, crackling and echoing in the box. Your hands are getting cold and your breathing becomes visible, forming small silver puffs in the air. Is it over? Can we talk now? Ever since I came to work here, it's been different. As if my mind's been wiped clean. Say nothing. It's so nice. So nice to be able to finally forget about you. And then it hits you. You're a recording. She tries again not to cry and still doesn't succeed completely. Her quiet sobs sound old and distant as if her voice had been played off a wax cylinder. Anger boils up in your chest. Just a recording and here I thought... Her sound melts into static from a long distance phone call. From time to time you can hear people talking in the distance, but you can't make out any words. This is where you hung up the call last time, but the recording is still going. Keep listening. A phone rings in the office with an old fashioned chime and someone walks by in a pair of heels. The static is like a warm blanket wrapped around the sounds. Is anyone there? No one replies, but the static grows stronger like rainfall. Then a female voice speaks out, completely different from the one before, glorious and total somehow crawling inside your head. Her words are too cold to comprehend. She smells of sodium lights and rain streaks on car windows. Eyes like pilot lights watch your shape in dark hallways, guttering. So, the strange alien thought pattern ends. The lieutenant cuts in, inspecting the intercom. It was a recording trapped in the circuitry from some ancient tenant. This sometimes happens. Should we conclude here? We have other mysteries to solve. Wait, a recording trapped in the circuitry? Mm-hmm. I don't have time to explain it to you right now. Maybe some time later, he looks at the sea, almost wistful. Something weird just happened to me. Don't take this the wrong way, but during our shots didn't working together. Something weird is almost always happening to you. Uh, that is true. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, what was it with the hanged man? I don't really know. What else we could check here? Are we checking the blood again? Is that what it is? So our odd soul wasn't in the back of the whirling. I don't know. He inspects the odd soul more closely. They're about the same size. Not the same boot. No. But they could be the same person. No horizontal boot prints. But whoever walked in the whirling's pinball workshop didn't walk here. No, these prints are pretty standard. The ones in the dust look custom. Or maybe they're just a foreign design. It's a boot print, whatever the case. Hmm. Okay. I'm not quite sure what the... Um, what the... Uh, Inland Empire thing with the hangman is maybe it was something but it says we can still do it if it's white so I'm not really sure um, so we need to go up this way we'll check the backyard wall um, and we need to post the thing and we also need to call the radio so that um, so that we can get more information on the armor. So is that the post box? I knew we'd get to use this mailbox for something. Yes, we're sending mail. Drop the white envelope in the box. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail has collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug Evra. You know he's going to play you somehow. All right, let's get back to go back to Everett. Lieutenant turns towards the industrial harbour. We don't mention anything to him. He won't know before it's too late. Okay. No, we're not gonna we're not gonna kick the delivery box in. That's just wrong. Before we go to Everett, though, let's um. Oh, what have we here? Fuck the world and piss. Okay. 
and pick up the radio again. Uh, connecting me to the 41st again. And no. Sylvie? Hi Sylvie, it's the police again. Oh great, she didn't sound thrilled. What else do you need, detective? Uh, have you seen my gun? Please, no, not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. She sounds beyond exacerbated. I showed you my gun. When did it happen? You tried to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and she stops hesitantly, not sure if she could continue. I should continue. Sounds like it's going to be bad. Do you really want to know? And what? What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It got pretty graphic. Oh, those again. I'd been trying to wean you off them. Off of what? You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun to your, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out. Off of that, people don't like that. Hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the walls, painting them red. I won't be seeing it because these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. People tried to back away from you or even slip out of the door, but you screamed, I am the goddamn law and you have to listen to me. You're all suspects in a murder investigation. Okay, I don't know what to say. Me neither. Um, why would I threaten to kill myself? Uh, yes, but what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is, next you were waving around money instead, saying things like, big bucks cannot lie and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask, she says. Do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirling? Well, there's an uncomfortable pause. You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir, clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I'm sorry about that. She doesn't sound like she's actually sorry. Anything else, detective? Uh, no, I think I'll get everything I need. Um. Yes, I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? Lieutenant leans in to listen, notebook in hand. Shoot. That suit of armor was issued to an orange Jersey citizen named Ellis Cartanea. That's Echo, Lima, Lima, India, Sierra, Kilo, Oscar, Romeo, Tango, Echo, November, Alpha, Echo, Romeo. Exact date of birth unknown. He was signed into the Lelystad County Neonatal Care Unit on the 28th of February 09. The neonatal care unit. He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor. Ooh, heck. Uh, near an abandoned farm. He spent four months in the neonatal unit. Survived, apparently. And was assigned to a foster family at, at two. This is what the ICP knows about him. He was raised by foster parents. Entered the... Ijbrand Military Academy in Redfort at 17. Then served in the Orange Asia forces till he was honourably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armour followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did, and that's it. There are no records of his employment in Krenel or any of its other incarnations, or him even entering Revacol. Uh, any information on his foster parents? None, officer, sorry. Wait, he was found a leaf compactor? It's a garden tool used to press leaves into these cubes. It's a detail the hospital had. Uh, it's a detail the hospital had. The only detail in these files. So I thought it would be good for you to know. It is. Thank you, Alice. Um, so all we have to connect him to Krenel is the armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double check their inventory. He leans closer and shouts. Thank you, Alice. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. She sounds pleased. Well, we have his name as service record now. Move on. Okay, run the number on the victim's armor. Okay, level up. A name, this is very good. Ellis Cotonet, he says to himself. I'm glad the inquiry was helpful to your investigation officer. Did you have any other questions? Uh, no, that's cool. 57th over an hour, a voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you, s you see a set of st uh, Yeah, 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 we know, we know all this. Right, so. First off, can we talk to these guys? We can talk to these guys, okay. That's one brutal motor carriage. 
If I were a real skull right now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. Whoa. Snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could like hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads, scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop <laughs> you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I love that Kim saying brutal motor carriage. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, we're certified skulls right now. Who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches in On the contrary, the part of the presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay, then let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Do you guys know Cindy the Skull? Young man's eyes glaze over as he marks in a voice filled with longing. Oh yes, yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah, the other guy lights up too. A true artist of the future, just like Arno Van Eyck. Um, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. He adds, returning from whatever void he was just visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is an unusually lenient towards them. Um... Your rhetoric, rhetoric is confusing. Any part of skulls or not? We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. And what makes you think that the organization would accept you? Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. Oh, uh, you'll see for sure once we're in. It's the last thing you'll ever see before the void consumes you. Throw him off his game. You don't feel very scared. Are you sure a skull would say that? Uh, he looks confused. Well... Yeah, I mean, we're only saying practice things for now. We don't mean no harm to the Skulls brand or to you. This is definitely something the Skulls would say, but we're not trying to encroach on the Skulls brand in any way. On the contrary, we're just here to market it. Hold on, why does a criminal gang need marketing? We think of it more like two franchises merging, you know? Us two and the Skulls. I really th feel like we would add more to the table. Spice things up here in Martinez, you know, get the old machine of pain and suffering oiled up real good. Um, doesn't it already have enough spice? Youth looks confused for a moment. There can always be more. In the end it won't matter. Till then. So you're just pretending to be as nasty and vicious as the skulls. Hey, we can be just as hard, like pavement on top of pavement, or brick on, t on top of another brick, or grave on top of a grave. These kids have the vocabulary, but might be missing a brain. Wouldn't a grave on top of a grave j be just a big hole? What's hard about holes? Filling them up, baby. Right, okay. Uh, enough about scullery, then. Mm-hmm. Do you know anything about the murder that took place? Murder? Man was hanged in the backyard of the whirling in rags. Yeah, sure, we'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. He clears his throat. He was a man. Also, he was hanged. Anything else? He was hanged from a tree. Yeah. I mean, duh. These punks don't know anything, let's just move along. Hey, stop right there, how does one know anything? Uh, this sounds like epistemology. A field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. However, there is no way these young men could possibly be aware of her work. I know that you don't know shit. Exactly, how can one know shit? For example, how can one be sure that there truly is a body hanging behind the hostel? What if it's art or just a mere spectre? That could be the case. Yes, a brilliant work of art. Lieutenant raises an eyebrow, but does not comment. What's with the jackets? What about them? <laughs> uh, well, first off, it's a statement, and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character, and I do like piss, really. Um, the word... I don't even know what that is. Piss... something epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. 
and I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. Makes sense. Uh, what I mean by this is we are all piss... Ah, right, okay. And that the whole world is inherently meaningless. Uh, though he seemed lacking in vocabulary, it seems that the young man has expertise in at least one field. Yeah, let's just... Yeah, okay. I'm done here. Right, so we're, going, we're off to see the wizard. The great fat wizard of... Being annoying. I don't know. I feel like it's been a while since we spoke to Everett. Am I blind? Um, logic encyclopedia. Rhetoric. There we go. And have we got any clubs that do rhetoric? Minus one rhetoric. No. Persuade the door to open. <laughs> nice. Uh, despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you, a beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Hello, is there anyone in there? The door stands silent. Satisfied detective, a wry smile crosses Lieutenant's face. Try again. If there's someone in there, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself beside the door. Mega rich light bending guy from deep within the container, a voice. Ahoy, come on in. The smile disappears can't be serious. Hey Kim, I said that not so long ago. Seems you have something in common. Okay, this is new. Mega rich light bending guy. The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of capital. The feeling causes all hairs on your body to stand at attention like soldiers preparing for review. Squint. <coughs> Something's amiss. The light beams light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, distorted, an echo. Trying to visualise the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you are. Hello? Welcome, come in, make yourself at home. Sorry I'm not better able to receive you. I wasn't expecting visitors today. You can't hear him exactly, yet you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange, an overwhelming hum covers everything, and voice doesn't escape from him. Now, he's cla he claps his hands together. What can I do for you, gentlemen? What can you see of his... Uh, what you can see of his body appears composed, in a sharp summer suit and yacht shoes. Uh, who are you? 
Who am I? Oh, I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. There's genuine surprise in his voice. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Anyhow, my name is Rustan... Rustan... Diodor. Okay. Investor, license holder, and extremely high net worth individual. And you are? Mr. Diodor, I'm Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner, Harrier Dubois. Uh, pleasure to meet you, Harrier Dubois, he says warmly. I must admit, the name suits you very well. Uh, how did... what are you doing in this container? Travelling. This is a great way to get around. It's fun, it's safe, and it gives me lots of time to think. By, by the way, let me ask you a question. Where are we exactly? We're in Martinez, district of Revacol, the former capital of the world. Ah, Revacol. I remember walking its streets as a teenager. It used to be a bowling alley in uh, Stel Maris. I wonder if it's still there. Uh, it's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. Uh, one of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of low net worth individuals are constantly banded together to ask for money. So you travel from place to place via shipping container. Smart, no? It also provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising we extremely high net worth individuals so constantly subjected to. Luxury yachts, high fidelity portable radio systems, pale proof outerwear and so on. It just gets a bit middle class after a while, a bit bourgeoisie. Um, those things all sound pretty nice. Uh, don't get me wrong, they're nice things, but once you achieve a certain level of wealth, your time and mental space become much more important than material goods. Good now that we've sorted that out. Let me ask you something else. Um, you're... <laughs> uh, how did you become so rich? Oh lord, not this again. What's the matter, Kim? Oh, nothing. It's just that we've got this murder to solve, and yet you go around asking everyone about money. And every time I ask, are you sure this is related to the case, you say, Sure, Kim, I think it is. And yet, it never seems to get us any closer to solving the case. The man chuckles. It's quite alright. I'm used to the question by now. To be blunt, I inherited my fortune from a grandmother who herself was an ext extremely high net worth individual back in grad. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices and unsupervised state policy. Actually, at this, the level this guy is, it takes several generations to do that, but alright. What's it like being an extremely high net worth individual? The man exhales with a whistle. Um, I've got to tell you, at first being rich is a lot of work. You've got to work hard because everything's so damn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. I don't even have any interest in replies. One would imagine living such a unbelievably boring <laughs> uh, We'll have to look at the achievements at some point, maybe after this um, uh, after, after this session. Uh, one would imagine living such a high net worth existence is overwhelmingly exciting. But yes, as you now see, it can sometimes just stun you with its boredom. Uh, okay, can I have some money? Could you please stop asking people for money? It does not reflect well on the RCM, and to be perfectly frank, we can't afford to look worse than we already do. You're right, though. It was extremely unprofessional. I apologise. It's perfectly all right. Based on your appearance, I can tell I'm dealing with a civilised man. As you may know, us high net worth individuals do not have a lot of cash on hand. Investments and liquidity are enemies of one another. I think I only have coins for copper machines. Uh, here's three real. How much can you get for this? Thank you for your kindness. Uh, you're welcome. You know, his eyes narrow. The light seems to bend more aggressively. Maybe you can make that money grow. Uh, come up with an investment plan. How's that sound? Uh, let's try it. Okay. Uh, you should invest in the RCM. The volunteer police force. Why would I do that? Because um, if you don't, who will? <laughs> I don't believe in handouts, especially for people who volunteered for their positions. Still, the idea of a privatised police force is extremely forward thinking. You could even say it's ultra, ultra liberal. Tell me, if you could invest in the RCM, where would you direct your resources? Uh, 
radio computers for every precinct. The RCM's problem was out of the kind you can solve with radio computers. The rock goes much deeper than that. If I could interject, the RCM's problems are mainly structural. We are hamstrung by a lack of clear line to authority, and our system of performance review strongly disincentivizes inter-precinct cooperation. I think the lieutenant's right. Your problems run much deeper than equipment or funding. The entire organizational structure of the RCM needs to be re redefined. You need a unified chain of commands, new metrics for measuring performance that reward real police work. Does that sound right? Yes, yes, that's precisely w what we'll need. Uh, so you'll do it? Hell no, can you imagine how much work that would take? Why would I do that when I can just speculate on exotic financial deriv derivatives from the comfort of this shipping container? Um, the thing about investing is that the less work you have to do, the better. Don't overthink that's what return on investment means. Lieutenant's disappointment is palpable. It's like someone just shot his dog. Oh, oh. Damage morale. Okay, we can... Uh, uh, now, was there anything else I could help you gentlemen with? We should get back to invi our investigation. It was a real pleasure. Sadly, though, my current lifestyle prevents me from remaining more than a brief time in any one place. Perhaps we'll meet again somewhere far away. Farewell, friend. May your peace of mind guide you to happiness. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know you're... Oh. Just knocked something off my uh, desk. Um, now we know you're a copper type. Wait, there are copa types? Uh, yes, guess what's yours? Uh, some kind of weapon cop? No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, my days. Can I click that? Um, of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info or... Maybe every time you say sorry, you get like a million bucks. That won't happen. Is there anything in here? Let's get the old torch out. It's pretty dark in here, isn't it? Interesting one. Flopping neck. Oh. Only problem with doing this is it's a long session with mouse and keyboard on a sofa and it's pretty uncomfortable. Oh. Okay. Let's go see Mr. Claire, shall we? Where's this sleeping dock worker, by the way? Again, before we see ever out, we always have to save. You never know what's going to happen in there. Okay, ever out, what you got for us today? Well, it's not a fishing rod. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you're already sat on that chair. Remember that container I asked you about? Turns out there's a mega rich light bending guy inside. Mega rich light bending guy? Oh my god, how did he get in there? Uh, don't know how he got in there. Damn it to hell, Harry. He slams his fist on the table. I specifically told my guys to check all containers for mega rich light bending guys. Uh, nothing can stop an in innovative mind. Honestly, Harry, we might be moving all kinds of suspicious things through this harbour, but I won't be caught transporting a light bending mega rich. He shakes his head. I have a reputation to protect. Uh, the mega rich people too. He was a nice man, gave me stock tips. No, they're not, he smiles brightly. 
the vermin, and one just found a way inside my container. Soon he'll bring the others, all three of them. Thank you for telling me. I'll see you this immediately. He bursts out laughing. I should have think what you're going to tell me next, Harry. Not for one second did he believe there's an actual mega-rich person somewhere in his container town. Um, it's done. I mailed the signatures you asked me to mail. The golden boy returns once more. M wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. He claps his hands together like a child who's just been offered cotton candy. Of course, I already knew this. Uh, my friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a future and proven to be a true man of the left. I can finally trust you now. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. He nods to the lieutenant, smiling broadly. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun. Nothing is off the table. See, forging that signature really paid off. Well done, sire. By guile and deceit, you're in. You don't know his full plan. Perhaps he expected trickery. Perhaps the signatures weren't important. The point is, do not think you're ahead of him. Um... Can I get my gun now? Harry, I've got to be honest with you, he turned sullen. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. Fine, where is it? An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry, word on the street is she's a character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy, the one who he described as terrifying. So the gun's still with the woman who bought it from Roy? Yes, the same one. So you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. He smiles, uh, shakes his head in wonderment. Crazy stuff, Harry, selling your gun like that. Wild. Anyway, the neighbours of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardier's union. Apparently she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Waving the gun around does not sound good. None of this does. Who is this old woman? Unfortunately, I don't know any more. You're going to have to go in blind, Harry, but she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the Pigs. I, for one, find it refreshing finally someone calls themselves a pig. A smile flickers in the corner of his mouth. She was waving her around at people? As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details, he smiles. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one won't get hurt. Can you set up a meeting? I already have, he holds out his index finger. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, near the old fish market on the coast. The one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, he claps his hands. Back to the fun stuff. She'll be there from uh, 10 till 2 in the morning. More fun stuff, he looks at you. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. Did you order the hangman killed? Order it? You know my men didn't kill him. They told you. It was a happy accident. You know how it is. No one takes the initiative. If I wanted him dead, I would have had to do it myself, and I'm too fat for that. Why are you so fat? <laughs> um, what do you gain from him being dead? Why, a war, of course. And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuragi. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group, and win before they even realise there is a war. Have you ever heard what two giant Serae's hornets can do to an entire colony of bees that destroy it? The train military people, aren't you afraid for your men? Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1, and that's just in Martinet. With all the unions in Revacol, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They've made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. How is this connected to the strike? Harry, there is no strike, only war, class war, or in business terms, a dawn raid. Oh wait, he pauses to rub his chin. Is that what you, when you still pay them something, because we won't do that. We're not going to give nothing. We're going to take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even that damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of it for the people, and fuck wild pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. So, that's why you haven't let Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Galmont go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her arsehole. She has no chance. Why are you telling me your plans? Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. He looks at the swordfish clock and nods. It's already happening. 
Interesting. Who killed the hangman? No idea. Could have been his own mother for all I know. If you ever find the guy, give him big, a big fat kiss from Everett Claire. Couldn't have done it without him. He really doesn't know. A guy. Huh? How do you know it's a guy? I don't. I told you it could have been his own mother. I'm pretty sure it wasn't anyone from the union. Maybe it was the mob. Or maybe he killed himself because he wasn't a cl closet socialist. Because uh, he was a closet socialist. Truth is, I simply don't know. He really doesn't. How many of you guys are there in the union? Don't really care about that. How are you going to fa fund your new independent harbour? Uh, yeah. Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How are, am I going to replace all the contracts we'll lose once the poo-poo uh, poo -poo hits the fan? The clients will ditch us. Harriet, we've thought of everything. Clients would take a well-known multinational conglomerate over a local mobster any day. Um, you can't possibly hope to continue like you have. Clients will leave en masse. Sure, some will go, but mark my words, the company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martinez and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold, exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs. Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsuragi. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samaran Iola. You don't need to be colonial colonialist about it. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babies, people with disabilities. That's just the tip of the top of the iceberg, though, isn't it? Interesting. <laughs> Uh, the company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad, he makes air quotes. Has bad optics, may be illegal in some countries. The De Brada's Union, however, we're all about large volume column. We're going to transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. He slams his fist on the desk once more. So your sick kid can get his uh, benefit and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off uh, Risperizol. Benefit is children's cold medicine, usually apricot flavoured, and, and risperizol is used to treat severe psychosis. And the kids on the street can get speed and uh, pyro pyrolidin. I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. He smiles. Um, but if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share, and I'd keep that stuff far away from mayonnaise. He's basically admitting it. Is Ruby helping you secure this fantastic share? Harry, if I was supplying raw materials to drug manufacturers, I would need an army of rubies. Lieutenant Nod slowly understood. Um, drugs are not for me, I'll report this. I have to admit, well, interesting stuff. I just want to solve this murder. You know why you're such a good detective, Harry? You don't get sidetracked. You <laughs> Yeah, not much. <laughs> um, you care about the people that you are supposed to protect, not some systems that may or may not be unethical. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbour's turnover, just like the harbour is but a small part of Martinez. Um, it would still be illegal. Let's look at the big picture. Martinez as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music, young mothers who want to start businesses, models who want to walk catwalks, and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place into Kingdom Come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth, and everyone's going to pull their weight. Let's keep focusing on the drug trade. He was almost a minute to it. <sighs> well, if... I mean, if it has the word incorporate in it, then I like it. I'm a money guy. Very ambitious. I'm not feeling it, honestly. Yeah, let's go from the money angle, see if he admits to it more. Yes, if you start thinking about it like that, um, uh, the socialist municipal body is sort of, it's like a corporation, isn't it? Use it, it uses corporate law. We're incorporated. I like to think we're using the best parts of all the ideologies here, Harry. The signatures I got, I know you plan to force them out with the construction noise. 
Harry, he shakes his head. By now you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access makes some people consider moving, well, let's just say there'll be freshly renovated buildings near the roundabout where those poor people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in quality of life. I'm talking real affordable workers' palaces. He proudly spreads his hands to demos demonstrating the size of the palaces. They're very large. <laughs> so the village is doomed, the lieutenant says grimly. You were there, you saw the place, a wasteland, there's nothing left. But mark my words, officers, he slams his fist on the table, causing some of the coffee to spill. We are going to reset it. Reset, he repeats. I have big plans for Martinez, and they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on the coast. That land will be used for munis municipal buildings and commerce. What do you mean? Harry, imagine a youth centre supermarket church complex. <laughs> Employing hundreds, no thousands of people, the coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turn to low-income housing. He leans forward. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago, and for God's sake, it's time to move on. Low-income housing, if, if even part of this is true, then why not? Uh, you super... Do you expect, really expect me to believe that? Yes, I do. I got the center. I got the room for a retail complex. And in four years, I'll get the church too. The wheels are already turning, Harry. The wheels are progress. This post-war limbo, I won't stand for it. There are kids practically playing with their own feces out there. I cannot go on. Or it cannot go on. The pain is true. He's seen the kids do worse than that. And then there will be a giant statue of him towering above it all. Wait, but will you erect a statue to yourself? I'm not a symbolist, Harry. I'm a realist. My statue statue will be Martinez rebuilt. Five-story building complexes. Kids off speed and landowners in Ozone hating me. Uh, that will be my statue. And yours. We're doing this together. Knew you were up to something. Damn right I'm up to something, Harry. It, the fist lands on the table again. I'm going to make the working man as rich as Joyce Messier. That's my job. Just like yours is to keep the peace. True flash of anger in in him as he thinks of her. I asked you about specific union members. We're way past specific union members now. This is big time. His eyes are shining. We're talking about the future of Revacol here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He points out the door. He loves to run his mouth on such matters. But I'm in big time mode, Harry. There's something different about him now. He's more vibrant, more alive in his big time mode. How many of you guys are there in the union? 2,372, he replies like a whip, plus yours truly, of course. So 2,373 is a sizable contingent for a labor organization in Revacol. That's it for now. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debarders Union. Suddenly there's sadness in his tone. This, he points to you, then himself, has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me. My door is op always open. A few more questions about the harbour. No, we've done it. Okay. Whew! That was a lot of stuff. Error during save. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, can we save it now? Okay. We go behind. No, we can't. See, I had a lot to say there, Mr. Claire. There's a lot to digest, so. Uh, hmm. So it leaves us with. Uh, we need to go see an old woman after 10 o'clock. Try and get his gun back. That would be nice if we could retrieve our gun. Oh, piece of candy. So now I think we go to. Top 
end of the first island uh, just to talk to the cleaning lady, see if that brings any new leads on whatever we were talking about before. I think it was about someone in room 11 or something. And there was a check with, um, I think with the uh, mural in that area as well. Looking through here would give us more info on the shooting. I don't think so actually, we've already looked in there anyway. So what's the check? Um, Conceptualization. Let's see what we got. Got, if it's got anything to do with the length of the game, but we've almost filled up the clothing slots. Ooh, I think we might need to save this. Yeah, percent we'll save it anyway. Because you see it finally. This wall is sublime. Look at it. The shadows, the colours. Let the conceptual joy ugh, flow into your pupils and blossom into thoughts in your brain. Wowzers. Let's conceptualise. Um, all the other walls on the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of Warcraft. Colour peeled from the very face of God. Oh, Wallfather. Kim, I must paint this wall and, and add even more beauty to it. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. You already have the heavy fuel oil to use as paint. It's red. And Cindy the Skull has a paintbrush. This is on. Um. First, you know, I know you're tired, Kim, but take another look at this wall. Draw nourishment from its beauty. Mm-hmm, sure. The lieutenant looks at the wall reluctantly, then back at you. I already have the paint, and just need to get a paintbrush from a Cindy's skull. He sighs, then adds in a resigned tone, if you must. Okay. Kind of want to go in here. on the door. No answer. Press your ear against the door. Not a sound. Silence is eerie. No, you're in there. That already defeats the point, doesn't it? Lieutenant glances at the surrounding windows. Let's get out of here. Okay. Uh, as you turn to leave, you hear footsteps on the other side. Yes, someone's definitely home. We should leave, Lieutenant whispers, and go talk with Everett, tell him what happened, that we couldn't open the door. Maybe there's a workaround. Okay, so that hasn't really changed since... Far. Quite excited to paint this wall though now. Give me a man 
moment. I didn't find any counterculture people in apartment number 10. It was just a real estate agent setting up uh, the room for new tenants. I see. She takes out her handkerchief and wipes her nose. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. Um. We don't want to lie to her. Um, yes, well, she doesn't know um, the world's most laughable centrist. Yeah, I, that is me. I, I, I'm always on the fence about stuff. Uh, yes, well, she doesn't know what to say, so she just coughs and repeats. I hope they're good people. Your statement's are too vague to comment on. Okay, thanks, Mum. Um, it was up this way, wasn't it? Paintbrush, please. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? <laughs> Piss blank and fuck the world send their best. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls, but she softens. But their hearts are in the right place. Got it. Enough of that, then. Um, is the bed in the call room yours? Oh, not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. It's not the nicest place, but I guess, guess it'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. She looks at the paint dripping down the wall. Like me, right now I'm doing nothing at all. The inspiration will come to her once hell is set loose on the streets. It's too calm right now. Uh, cool, I have other questions. Uh, Cindy, I'm going to need your paintbrush. What for? Um, for art. It's for art, okay. Well, if it's for art, but her eyes narrows to slits, what kind of art are we talking about? Everything is sad and shit. We need art to make it okay. Just give me a brush. It sounds like you're just about to live out your self pity, not make a statement. I can't have shit out of my conscience. You'll see, you will all see and tremble. Yeah, not gonna hold my breath. Um, conceptualization. Did we have something for conceptualization? Are we already wearing it? Yep. I mean, we could level it up and just go about it until we get the brush. Damn, if I'd have said the artsy art thing, maybe. We're already at eight, I don't wanna, oh, we don't have another level up yet, anyway. Okay. Um, Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? No, I've come to cheat the game. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? I just want your damn paintbrush, damn it. God damn it. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Officers, have you come to admire my mural? We just gotta have faith. Faith, the faith, the faith, the gotta have faith, the faith. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Okay, I don't have faith. Three more times, and then we're, uh, we'll leave it. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Hello 
Again, officers. Have you come to Three. Again, Excellent. Um, you don't have the skills to execute something like this in practice, but oh boy, the idea is going to blow up in mind. I'm going, cr going to create a highly detailed skeleton of an ancient bird that went extinct a hundred million years ago. She squints her eyes, and then I'm going to paint it red using heavy fuel oil, and then I'm going to effing light it on fire. Her lips move on fire. She whispers to herself. It's the phoenix, get it? What do you say? She hunches her shoulders and throws you a grim look. I say sod off, you don't have the technical skills to do that. Uh, I thought you liked my idea. I like your idea, I should have thought of it myself. I don't need this kind of competition in my neighbourhood. Damn it, it was too strong. But Cindy, art is bigger than either of us. Then get your brush from the fucking art. Oops, my apologies, I guess I was trying too hard. You're a police officer and a grown-up. Why are you trying to impress her? Maybe a different approach. I've got you cornered. Hand over that brush. Oh, police brutality, that's the good stuff. How come you're letting this baby rat run circles around you? End this now. Cindy, I'm going to stand here till you hand over that paintbrush. She looks at you suspiciously. Have you got any kids? Because you sound like the world's saddest dad right now. Fine, but fine, take the brush. I'm all out of fuel oil anyway. She drops the paintbrush at your feet. You know what you've got in that fuel canister you scavenged from your Kanima. Red dyed heavy fuel oil. Time to get proper work, artist. See you later, Cindy. Right, okay. That was a bit cringe, but we got it. Paintbrush in your hand looks like a loaded revolver. What will it be? Desperado. Quite a few things come to mind. Um. Hmm. Um. 3,500-year-old pictogram of a human being. Uh, no parking, something beautiful is going to happen. That sounds like the most interesting one. It's going to be terrible, isn't it? Hmm. It's not that bad, actually. You've spoken. The world will now silently repeat the message for a deca decade or so until the sea degrades the paint added under the layer of try us to the city. Very poetic, the lieutenant nods in appreciation. It doesn't sound sincere. Real poetry. Should we return to our murder investigation? I hear that's a really bad one we're supposed to solve. Alright, Kim. Jeez Louise. Right, it's next on the old agenda. Where is Tommy Lahom? Martinez Waterfront. Oh, he's the... Right, yeah, 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 okay. He's the guy next to the wagon, isn't he? Um... Oh, we've got two with him. Whoa, 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 okay. Okay. Um, I haven't been scrolling down, have I? <laughs> Map wall... Interfacing challenge map wall. The hell? I don't think we have 
Okay, let's um there's, there's too much. There's too much. I don't think we have time really to do absolutely everything. I mean we do have time, but I'm streaming this to YouTube, so I can't really be just going backwards and forwards and getting everyone. Oh, I could, but I'm too engrossed in the story. I want to know what's going to happen. So we need to go check the um, boy out over the other side. Over the other side. Tell us where that is on the map. That's a look, journal. Um, west of the boardwalk on the coast, somewhere in the reeds. Okay, we kind of know where that is. Uh, we need to try and convince the other lady to help him set up the nightclub, even though I don't really want that. We need to talk to Egghead again, see if we can navigate through a maze of things that he's saying. Uh, determine where the shot came from. Yeah, I was checking the boardwalk for bullet traces, but there was nothing there. Check island for bullet traces. How do we get to the island? Is it through that bunker? I, I'd imagine so, but how on earth? We That was like impossible, wasn't it? It was in a, interfacing. Go to something which is probably going to be relatively easy first, so that'll be checking the boy out. Sounds so wrong, doesn't it? But you know what I mean. Oh, those guys are back. Gotta be it, isn't it? It could be. A metal and plastic contraption bobs up and down amidst the trembling reeds. At first, it just looks like trash, but if you look closer, that over there, he points to the strange looking object. It must be the boy Classic uh, told us about. The one she hid a passport in. We should take a look. Ooh, hidden things, secrets, lies. <coughs> Pick up the boy. You lift the boy out of the water without much effort. It's not tied or to anything. It's not tied or to anything. The cards dangling from the bottom appear to have been cut. Uh, examine the plastic ball. The number 11 has been written on the yellow plastic. It hasn't been in the water for very long. It's already discoloured and sh slimy with silt. A latch holds it closed, but only just barely. The brittle metal of the latch is cracked. Simple construction, very unsafe. Shake the boy. There's something in there splashing around. Sniff the boy. It smells like you would expect it to smell. A concentrated version of the coast. Salt, industry and slop and decay. Open the boy. A shot glass, glasses worth of seawater pours out, some algae and something else. Well damn. We look it's still here, a little longer and it would have floated away. Lieutenant flashes a mirthless half smile. We still got here too late, there's nothing of use here anymore. No documents. Who do you think took them? I have no idea, Lieutenant taps his foot frowning. This is a minor quirk, we know what was in the boy anyway. He purses his lips, or oh, think we do. This is a small loose end either way, not important I hope. Maybe Classia took them himself, that may very well be the case. We should keep an eye on her, he sighs. Nothing more for us to do here, let's go. You could ask the miss what she thinks later if you have the time, though you doubt she'll tell you much at this point. Okay.
here again. Hello, isn't this a fine morning? Should we try listen to the whatever again? Oh, eight percent. Um. We have a, we, I don't think we've got a level up, do we? No. Well, it's not going to happen, but we'll try it. Check off the feeling. Okay. The, the boardwalk's really annoying me because we've been over here quite a lot. And it's saying we need to check it for evidence of a shot but I just don't know where else on the boardwalk we can go to check for evidence of a shot you'd think it'd be right at the end wouldn't you Maybe we have to fall through it. Oh. No, I have no idea. Oh, we're not even able to attempt going in there anymore.
I mean, there has to be a n new area or some new stuff soon because we're running out of things to do. We've got all these. Ch I'm going to have to go through that list and do all those, aren't I? Yes. What is it? Suggestion. Interesting. A police officer trying to evict a citizen from a public space, to, space to, despite the Wayfair Act. What's the Wayfair Act? The Wayfair Act states that citizens have the right to gather in public spaces unless they're disrupting the public order. And she's not disrupting any order, I mean. I'm a circuit bender and no one has ever... No one ever has anything against circuit benders. Hmm. Yeah, we can't... We can't do that. the way to the... Oh, it's over there. Oh. I oh, know the bar's right there. <laughs> Back to the heavyweight jam! <laughs> yeah, man. Uh... Hardcore! Hardcore. But is it? I mean, yeah. really? The young man had to capital G before H in his years and as This produces a guttural, got welding accent and makes him sound more animal, more in it. Maybe it's not a got welding, maybe it's Orange Jay. Is it probably a, an homage to Orange Jay where Arno Van Eyck is judging by his name? Could you be listening to an Arno Van Eyck creation right now? So this is the famous. Ar Van Eyck, I'm you know hearing. He moves his mouth, but sound doesn't come out. His eyes are the size of saucers. Looks like you've rendered him speechless. You know Van Eyck? Yeah, I'm a major Van Eyck. Wow. The skinny Wraith looks at you with some disbelief. So am I! So am I! <laughs> he begins to shake his head so everyone would understand. Oh, is that why they call you Egghead? Because. Egghead to the mega, the K became the G, the boy became the man, the advent? Be close. True, hard, full, car. It's Is hard it? car. Skip a D, skip a danger. I am. We're close. True, hard, full, car, hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Here comes the night. <laughs> We're close. True, hard, full, car, hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. All core. All right. Yeah. Through his brow, uh, his very large head traces uh, the sublime invisible movement of the music in the very real air of this attempt. Hardcore! Ah! Is it though? <laughs> what is it? I mean, really. No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. <laughs> You said you were worried. What do you think is wrong with the music? Nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is, is in its infancy, you know? For example, take this Arno Van Eyck track I've been pumping for the last month. <laughs> and we'll continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? He thinks for a moment, then his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit pro, like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and failed a cop, but you're 
pretty sure anything cannot be both proto and hardcore. It's proto, not hardcore at all. Whoa, culture cop. I think you might be right, but how could it become hardcore then? I know in my heart, but cannot think in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Uh, sounds suspicious, suspiciously like a question. I thought the question was, what is the question? You now this is the answer. Try to think of anything can make it harder, Carl. What? He looks at you with customary amazement. Guys, there's something happening in his, in his head. As your mind works, the beat recedes from your ears. You hear your own blood pulsing through your head, nourishing your thoughts with oxygen. The rhythm is familiar. Uh, think even harder. Oh <laughs> yeah, he's doing it. But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. Feel the movement of the blood through your head. The abstract shapes swelling in the foreground have done so in vain. This is a core matter. The answer in the double kick that moves the milliliters through your mind. The Dark Thud is the source of all rhythm, the inspiration behind mathematics, the hardcore. I know, so does mine, he laughs at it. Uh, wait, I just remembered something, I'm the police. Uh-huh, the young man is bursting with anticipation. Maybe your body can tell you what I know Van X jam is missing to make it harder car. Are you a thought reader? No nation but trans nation, no war but class war. Don't be a lunatic, of course he isn't. Jermaine here just yells random things. Odds are sooner or later one of them will come off as thought reading. Yeah, revocal imperative. Unless you were thinking revocal imperative right now. Anyway, I've had a similar thing happen with eggs yelling, I know what you mean. Your real name Jermaine? Dakar Harkar Jermaine Egghead. Um, basically it is. Why are there lungs on your belt buckle? Lungs are for love. Love, he suddenly yells at the, as the world seems to stop. In a woman's lungs, lonely as I am, I'm not afraid. This strange damaged feeling grows on and on because I've never loved someone like you before. Uh, a dopamine surge accompanies the words. It feels like electricity flowing through your scalp dissipating into your neck feels good like a spark of life in a morrid bun spongy collie body we can come back to this because we um have stuff we can do to make uh get better physical instrument first off taking this shirt off helps that gives us plus two gives us plus one, doesn't it? Hmm. I thought we had some physical instruments, though. Oh, that's minus two. We don't want that. Okay, let's try again. Good morning! Yeah! That's better. Pump it up! Pump it up! Pump it up! Needs more bass. What? The young man makes a sudden move, like he's, about to, like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. And a melody. A good melody is what makes the song really stick, so you can't get it out of your head anymore. Wow, okay, we should start with the melody bit. Where would we get that stuff from? I don't know, I was thinking you would know. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get people going and say it's hardcore. Okay, I'll look into it. It's an in an official capacity. It's up to the police to make beats go harder. I'll see if I come up with something on my own. A citizen investigation. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile as if it could hinder your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it so that Egghead could use it to re remix Van X Jam. Yeah, maybe that street hawker across the pawn shop has some tapes to sell. It's just an idea.
St. James the Boulevard before the canal bridge. The one that takes you to the whirling in rags. Yeah, okay, we know. And where's it sidewalk? Okay. Feels cold, does it? Check it off. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, cop man. Hey, I have a tape with me. Maybe you can use it to improve the jam. Tape, yeah, spin the tape. I got the, this banging mega mix. Alright, he snatches the tape from your hand and attaches it to the empty reel slot. One hand on his headphones, he listens to the audio, then shaking his head he says, No, 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 this is going to make people scared. He adds the tape back to it. Keep positive, keep the love in the house. Okay, never mind. So we need to find another tape. Okay, so I think we leave this one here for now. How do we get out onto the island? That's what I want to know. We take the boat. Of course we take the boat. Has she gone back there? We have to convince her to let us use the boat. Okay. I'm just going to see if she's here and then we'll call it a... Well, see if she's here and speak to her, see if that's an option. Then we'll call it a... She's here, she'll be over here. Hello. Yo, can we borrow your boat? You're back. Good. What can I help you with? There's a boat. You seem to be out fishing. The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. <laughs> what is it with the waves and fishermen? She tilts her head and looks at the sea. We need to be out there with them, fishing, making a living, so I ask them to accommodate me. That's my motor carriage on the sea, by the way. Oh, she looks in that point in direction that's good to know I guess why is it in the sea it's an accident I'm sorry she looks at you and shrugs this calls for a funeral if you ask me you suggesting we honor the carcass of my former motor carriage aye feels deserved don't you think falling in the line of duty and all one I thought maybe I should why odd our things are a part of our life world. They're made with human sweat and they share human history. We should care about them as we care about humans. To some extent at least. Life world. Someone's been reading up on last century got Wildean philosophers. Play it cool now. Alright, I'm in, but organising a funeral takes a lot of time and effort, doesn't it? Oh yeah, she says with a chuckle. You won't even be able to get it out of the water before early June. And where are you going to bury it? Who to invite? What music to play at the wake? Take it from someone who's been through a few funerals. It's easiest just to leave them there and let nature take care of it. That's all we have time for right now anyway. The lieutenant looks at you sympathetically. Come back here in June and see how you feel ab about it then. It's not like it's going anywhere. Let's focus on things we can actually do. Absolutely. Vicenia. Right, okay, yeah, so we'll leave it there for today. Um, yep, yeah, thanks for joining us, and I shall catch you all in the next episode. Alright, see you in a bit. Bye.